We're good. First of all, good to see everybody. I haven't met all of you. Some of you I know, current students, and uh, maybe you've done another BGU program and you're considering the DTL, or some of you, this might be your first time interacting with us. So, so glad that you're here. And uh, I'm Brian McCabe. I'm the academic dean at BGU. So I get the awesome privilege of providing leadership to all five of BGU's academic programs. We just started a, a PhD in uh, January that we're really excited about, and we're getting some traction there. Uh, we have our Doctor of Ministry program, which I'm a graduate of, actually. I graduated in uh, 2012 with that. And then uh, we have our, of course, this program, our DTL program, which is our biggest program by far at PGU. It's, it's been very popular uh, with our leaders, which, uh, which Coffee and uh, Dr. Jordan will tell you all about. And uh, then we have two master's programs, MATL and EMBA. And those are both some awesome programs as well. Uh, but the, the urban immersions are a big part of what we do at BGU. And that's been difficult for us with the pandemic. Uh, we had a, a Nairobi, Kenya urban immersion in May that we ended up not being able to have the traditional on-site components that we were hoping to have because of travel restrictions. And then we had a course lined up in Philadelphia, Pennsylvania, which is my state where I live. I actually live on the western side of Pennsylvania in Pittsburgh. Uh, so we decided not to have the on-site component of that and to move that to October 2021 term, hopefully when people can travel around a little bit more. But we are real excited to share. If you saw the newsletter, then you saw that we're going to put together a really awesome course it's uh, combining our transformational leadership class, which is an online option of an urban immersion. We're going to combine that with the CCBA National Virtual Conference. That's going to be a really awesome course coming up in the October term. And so excited about that. The October 1st through 3rd virtual conference for the Christian Community Development Association will be uh, just such a powerful time together. Last year, we had an urban immersion in Dallas, which is where the CCBA National Conference was held. And our students had a really great experience there with world-class speakers. Uh, Dr. Jordan was there. She can tell you um, about some of that and what that experience was like for our DTL students. Uh, and then um, we actually have uh, some more urban immersions coming up. The next global one that is scheduled is going to be in Tegucigalpa, Honduras, and my friend Alfredo. Uh, Umania is, uh, is actually interested in the DTL. Uh, Alfredo and his wife, Lisa, are great friends of mine. We do urban immersions there every year through my church. And uh, we're going to be teaming up with them and a bunch of other partners in Honduras for an urban immersion in May. The dates will actually be May 7th through 16th. So uh, those are a couple opportunities coming up. And then we rotate them around each year. The next year will be Philadelphia. Uh, and uh, Amsterdam, we're going to be having an urban immersion in Amsterdam. And then uh, after that, Dr. Jordan will probably maybe share some details of an, an immersion that she's working on in Memphis, uh, where she is from. It's going to be an exciting uh, opportunity. I guess that's going to be two years from now. So we yeah, time is flying. And uh, uh, Paulette, I was just kind of uh, introducing myself to the students. I didn't want to take over your your thunder here while while you were getting connected. So I'll go ahead and turn it over to you to share about the DTL and uh, and good to see you. All right, well, good morning, everybody. <laughs> I, am, um, I am in the middle of a major transition moving from Virginia to Texas. So I am in the home of some friends in Killeen, Texas. And I had decided to go out on the patio so I wouldn't disturb them. And the neighbor started doing his yard. <laughs> so he turned on lawnmowers and weed eaters. And so I had to relocate back inside. And uh, I want to get started with just sharing a little bit about the DTL program. I'm going to share my screen and bring up the presentation. Dr. Paulette, I'm, I'm sorry. Um, I started us without opening in prayer. Um, sorry, Dr. Brian. Okay. Um, for, yes, I can do that. Could you do that, please? Thank you. Absolutely. Absolutely.
that is that is one of the hallmarks of of uh, BGU is that we we include and incorporate uh, God first, and then of course the the privilege of prayer. So let's open in prayer this morning. Father, we, we pause to thank you for your many blessings. We thank you, God, for being in control of this world and in control of all that is going on. And for that, God, we trust you. We thank you, Lord, for the umbrella of BGU that brings us together in these settings where we can combine the process of education with our faith and our belief and trust in you. And we thank you for that opportunity, Lord. We thank you for all who are on this call today, Lord. We pray for the decision that you will help them to make regarding this program. We pray, Lord, that you will order their steps as they move forward. And we wanna just be there to support them and to uh, give them guidance and direction. And we just pray, Lord, that your Holy Spirit will give us all uh, guidance and direction today that you will go before us, that you will control all that is done, that it will be done according to your will and according to your way. In Jesus name we pray. Amen. Amen. All righty. So can you all see what I am sharing? Yes. Okay. So we're here to talk about the DTL. Um, as uh, Dr. McCabe said, it is um, BGU's most popular um, academic program. And the question that we're gonna address today is, is it a God fit? Because we certainly believe that um, those who are successful in this program, that God has ordered their steps. He's made the way for them to participate. He's made the time. He's provided the resources. So it needs to be in line with your mission, with your ministry, with your calling um, in life. And then is it, is it a good fit for you? Is it the right time for you to do this? Is it the right uh, opportunity for you? Is it the right space in your life? So is it a God fit and is it a good fit? That's what we're going to try to answer today. And here's how we're going to do it. We're going to take a look at an overview of the program, um, look at the actual program requirements, and then the program options, because here is where you get to make a choice in the DTL program. Then we're going to hear from one of our graduates, just getting a perspective from uh, uh, his perspective from being a student and now a graduate and, and what the degree has done for him. Um, you've already heard of the immersions and the overtures. I've just got a slide here that outlines them through 2023. And then we'll open it up for discussions and take any of your questions. And the end, uh, our admissions director, Coffee and uh, student services director will uh, complete the forum for us. So overview, the, these are my words. I've been in higher education for over 31 years, uh, working with doctoral level students since 2012. And um, what I saw when I, when I looked at the DTL, these are the words that I came up with. It's uniquely designed to meet the needs of an elite group. It's not for everybody. It's not for anyone. It's for an elite group of global servants and servants, servants of the Most High God, leaders in their respective areas, as it provides for the advancement, innovation, transformation of kingdom principles and leadership across all borders and in all types of organizations. So I point out again, it's not for everybody. You need to examine where you are in your career, in your ministry, in your calling, in your relationship with God to see if this program is suited and, and fitted for you. Can you fit school into your already busy and demanding life? And if so, how? And you've got to answer that question because, as I said, it, it is for an elite group of people, but there is a demand placed on you the minute that you become a student. We try to help you with that demand by making the DTL program uh, flexible. Uh, it is student-centered. We, we often gather to make decisions and we remind ourselves that we are a student-centered university. It's a Bible-based curriculum, and then it's tailored 
tailored specifically to the individual student. So we, we try to help you with the demand. The demand is there. there. You can't go through the program without the demand for your time, your attention, your resources, your effort. But we try to help you as much as we can by making it as, as flexible as we can. It's contemporary, applicable, and innovative concepts taught by the world's finest and most qualified faculty. I think in every DTL class, you will find a faculty member who is in your corner, who wants to see you succeed, who will bend over backwards in order to help you do that. That doesn't happen in every university. The degree app uh, offers that academic research and real world application. Now, when I finished my uh, dissertation, it sat on a shelf, it has dust on it today because it had no real world application. It was just pure research. That's not what we produce in the DTL. We produce a dissertation, yes, but we produce a dissertation that results in true transformation and innovation and advancement. And your dissertation will become a part of your world uh, journey as you move forward. And then I say authentic transformation is the heart of the program in your own setting and in your own culture. So you will come up with your ideas for your dissertation. They will be real, not, not imagine, not um, something that we just make up, but they will be real situations, real circumstances, real conditions, real ministry issues that you will address with that. Um, dissertation and and that is what we call authentic transformation looking for that research not to uh, result in uh, something that sits on the shelf but something that is applied and dynamic variable lumbar support and 10 ergonomic that change what is that that's somebody i'm hearing some some sound okay uh program requirements i'm First, a master's degree in any subject from an accredited university, that's a U.S. equivalency, uh, proficient in the English language, proven leadership experience that could benefit from academic programming. We're not looking for um, the, the um, beginner, the, the novice. We're looking for a proven leader who can benefit from what this program offers. There is no MDiv or prerequisite other than the master's degree, and you can transfer credits into the program when they are taken at an accredited university and they are equivalent uh, courses. Uh, you will have to identify a personal learning community and professional references and that PLC journeys with you through this degree. You're not alone. You take to them uh, the results of your classes. You take to them the challenges that you find in your classes and, and they help you with that process. And then of course the financial ability to find the program and the support. The DTL is a 40 credit hour degree and it usually takes uh, two to three years to finish it. Two is very ambitious. It usually averages about three to five years to complete. 20 credit hours um, of those 20 credit hours, one will be the eight credit uh, immersion and overture. And um, that that's an experience that it's hard to put into words, but it is absolutely priceless when you um, take those 10 days to commit to um, learning and studying a place from the perspective of its current events, but also its biblical application. It is just an awesome experience. Um, as Dr. McKay mentioned, I was in Dallas. That was my first one. And I was just absolutely blown away by the interaction with the level of professionals in the room that were uh, both from the community and also in the class as students, uh, the interaction, the sharing of information, the, the gaining of knowledge, the development of relationships, the, the, the list just goes on and on. So um, you, you definitely want to, if at all possible, um, be able to participate in one of the immersions or the overtures. And then there's 20 credit hours of what we call core courses. Um, it includes that overture and immersion. It includes a research course that will um, help you to develop your dissertation idea. And then um, the dissertation final projects one and two. Now the differences in the options 
are the option one is a city transformation. These are leaders who are at the city level looking to make change at that level in their community, in their churches, in their cities. Um, and, and again, the key word is transformation. Um, your focus is on your city. You're going to study the assets that are in that city. You're going to look at how you can uh, bring community resources together, how you can establish partnerships to gain uh, for that community or that city. So city transformation. And then option two is organizational and entrepreneurial. If you're in a, a major organization, a minor organization, small business, nonprofit, uh, for-profit, whatever kind of organization that you're in and you're looking to transform some element of that organization or that business, then you would select option two. And then option three is cultural transformation, transformation in your own setting um, at any level, but in your own setting, in your own city, in your own country. If you're looking to uh, make transformations at that level, you would select option three. With each one of these options, there are courses that are suited to prepare you for um, the dissertation process. And that's what we do with the elective courses. And then as you move into your, your core courses, but it's a 40 credit degree program. Now I'm going to ask um, Dr. Marcel Hudson, uh, he's a Chief Executive Officer in the Ministry of Education in Guyana, if he would just share with us for a few minutes um, uh, his perspective as a student and as a now graduate of the program. Um, Dr. Marcel, are you there? Yes, Dr. Jordan, thank you very much. Yes. Thank you, first of all, for the opportunity. Let me extend a special good morning to all the persons and the, uh, the participants on, on this uh, uh, forum today. Um, I was asked to share briefly about my experience as a student. I would just like to begin by saying that uh, in 19, uh, 20, what am I saying? I graduated last year, June, as a... Uh, yeah last year june as a student in the dtl program um, that program i could consider it nothing less than transformational i think the program really uh, said exactly what it intended to do um, and the, as a student i really uh, received in that program and uh, i think it has made me a better person today as the chief education officer in the Ministry of Education. So my experience, I could say it was very fulfilling. I remembered um, inquiring about the program, starting the program and being told that I would have to read some 3,800 pages for uh, <laughs> book reviews as part of an eight credit course. And that was the immersion. And uh, that was pretty scary because that was my orientation when I asked the question. I think it was that Dr. Lita who explained to me, she said, well, yes, you, you have this eight credit course that you'll have to read some 3,000. I said, wow. But then I realized, you know, um, you just don't, I think I heard Kathy mention that she worked hard and she's waiting to graduate. I realized that you just can't Google doctor and you become a doctor. You have to be committed and, and dedicated to a cause, to, to a purpose. And so it takes a lot of effort and energy for you to actually um, be successful. I think it is the Chinese philosopher Lao Tzu who said, a journey into a thousand miles begins with a single step. And what I've discovered, at every step that, that I would have taken in the right direction, the journey became um, easier, it became lighter. And so I believe, um, I just want to encourage the students who are in this program and those who are thinking about this program, it is, it is probably the best doctoral program you, will, you, 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 you would ever um, see around it in terms of the transformational nature um, of, of, of the program. The course delivery, as Dr. Jordan uh, made mention of, was um, very interactive and um, the use of technology, the group work, the site visits, and the like. Sometimes I still feel nostalgic about, uh, about Fresno, California, because that's where I did my, um, that's where I did my immersion. And uh, I mean, the visits, the places that we saw, California being in a state of decadence in the earlier years, but the old concept of transformational leadership and, 
uh, the, the concept of community and working together collaboratively for collective impact. Uh, we, we, we saw how that city came out of a state of ruin into something that is quite acceptable today. And so we were able actually to, to, to see uh, the, 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 these concepts at work. Of course, our professors, they were very amenable. I mean, Dr. Jordan, I, uh, herself was, was, was a professor when I did the, the human resource, the human development course. Um, and of course, Dr. Brian, I remember doing a course with him, poverty, diversity, and social justice. And so these are persons who, who, who were amenable, persons who were accessible, and who you could interact with and, and, um, and, and be encouraged. You know, I, I have gone to many universities um, and I've seen how people operate. And, uh, some people, it's just, about, it's just about money, it's just about marks. But BGU has uh, this orientation about seeing people fulfill purpose and graduate. And so um, I think that is the hallmark. I remember my professor at the University of Guyana, where I, I, I did um, the master's in education. I actually brought him on board. Um, to BG, BGU, and he was actually my professor who supervised my, my dissertation. And he said, you know something, this university is very unique. And uh, you know, you were able to say how you would have impacted or your resort will impact the lives of people and so on. And so I think this, this is so important. So um, we were able to see the, the transformational perspectives uh, that Baki would proffer. We were, we were able to see this perspective operationalized, you know, in, in terms of the different perspective, the calling base, the, uh, uh, the, the, the calling base leadership, the, the, the incarnational leadership, servant leadership. Uh, we were able, shalom, you know, we were able to see all of these things in, operationalized as we've been down into Fresno. And I think that is the beauty about the immersion. You're able to practice. It's like an incubation. You go and so you're able to, to practice and you're able to learn um, from, from those experiences. I could say, um, coming out of the, this program, I've actually written a book. I don't think I would have ever written that book if I had not gone to BG, BGU, at least with such alacrity, with such speed. Um, and so the book is entitled Born to Succeed, a collaborative approach for improving the God-given literacy potential of students. Um, in the early grades, and this book is now on Amazon in the Kindle version, as well as the hardback. And I could say to you that it has impacted the, 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 the Guyanese education system. Um, I've actually had to buy copies and bring them um, some nearly 200 copies and, and bring them to Guyana because persons wanted them because they were not familiar with how to do the purchase at Amazon and so on. And so, um, so I've written that book and it is actually, I saw persons buying it in Germany, persons, you know, in Europe and so on. And so uh, this, all of this, uh, what I'm saying here is as a result of being a student at BGU because of course, I think the research is more action research. We don't look for relationship and variables as a researcher. And that's the lowest kind of research where you look for relationship in variables, but we, we do uh, what is called, or what you may want to call an action research where you could impact change and, and, and change the lives of people. And I believe many of our students, teachers are benefiting from, um, from, from that, that piece of work. So I, don't want, I know the time is short that, that has been given to me, but I would like to close by noting that um, more than ever now, this world is in need of change agents. And I think as aspiring students, as current students, as students who would have already graduated, I think we should all uh, we should all desire to become agents of change, to become real transformational leaders. That is to practice what we have learned. You know, lots of people get a doctoral degree and they put it on the shelf. They're happy that they are called doctors and so on. But what impact are you making in the lives of people? And we are not just doctors, but we 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 are God people, and therefore we should be able to utilize what. What, what God has given to us. It was Margaret Mead who said, never doubt that a small group, a small group of uh, thoughtful, committed citizens can change the world. Indeed, it's the only thing that ever has. And so I believe as a small group of people, uh, committed, dedicated people, persons would have graduated from this university, even as we go out, uh, we could impact change in the world. And I believe BGU 
it is probably the best university to be at at this point in time. Thank you very much for the opportunity, Dr. Jordan. Absolutely, absolutely. Any um, questions for Dr. Hudson before I move on? Brother Paul Morris, I see your hand. Did you have a question for um, Dr. Marcel? Okay. All right. Well, thank you. Thank you so much, um, Dr. Hudson, for sharing with us. Thank you. Okay, so you've heard a little bit about the immersions and the overtures, and uh, what I'm showing now is the schedule as we know it right now. You've heard of how it, uh, COVID has impacted the 2020 schedule for both uh, Nairobi and for Philadelphia, and then 2021, and generally in April, it's overseas, and in October, it's going to be here in the U.S., um, 2021, it's Honduras, and I actually can't pronounce the name of that city. Um, Dr. McCabe, if you're on still, if you just give us the name of that city for Honduras. I am from that city. The name is Tegucigalpa. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. And uh, so that's April of um, 2021, and then October would be um, Denver, Colorado Springs, 2021 of October, and then uh, Amsterdam for 2022, and then October of 2022 is Memphis, and that's my hometown, and um, that is a church, um, it's a it's a church capital of the South, it is the home of the Church of God in Christ, which is the largest uh, African-American um, Pentecostal organization in the world, um, and it's right there in the heart of Memphis downtown. A um, lot of history of the music and, and jazz with Blue Sh and Bill Street, um, but there's lo uh, lots the the um, the entire um, movement for social justice in the '60s um, has a, a big piece there with the Martin Luther King Center, and um, it, it's a city filled with um, extremes, extreme poverty, and extreme wealth. Um, and just want to explore that from a biblical perspective as well as a, a contemporary um, uh, approach. And the Church of God in Christ Convocation is in returning to that city in that year. And we wanted to add that as part of that uh, immersion experience as well. So it will be a packed 10 days uh, where you will get the opportunity to explore that city. And, you know, it, it's difficult to put into words what you experience in an immersion. But one thing you is for certain, it stays with you. The experience stays with you. Uh, recently, we had a DTL student who began to struggle with the program and um, uh, had some personal issues going on that were, were really just impacting his ability to uh, perform in the class and participate, and it was unlike him. He had been a, a, a good student up until that point. And because of a relationship that was formed in the Dallas immersion, um, I was able to connect those two students where a fellow student could come in and help him with uh, some of the things he was struggling with. So it, it's almost like you form relationships that, that last a lifetime and the impact of the experience just stays with you. And I really hope that you'll get an opportunity to experience it because you, you really just cannot put it into words. 10 days, yes, that's a lot to sacrifice. You have to take a, you know, you have to travel, you have to come off, you take time off your jobs. But when you do it, I, I, I'm almost certain that it is worth the sacrifices that you make. So a great part of the program, a unique part of the program, an experiential part of the program, and a relational part of the program. So it will it will give you, in addition to being a regular nine-week course with all of the academics, it will give you all of that in addition. So hope you'll be able to make it to one of those. 
Dr. Paulette, we have a, a yes. question in the chat for, uh, we have two questions, but one um, for Dr. Marcel, um, can you tell us the title of your dissertation? And um, the question is, what project did you do? And how did, what type of transformation were you looking at? Just briefly, so that people know what kind of projects they end up doing in the DTL. Uh, Dr. Marcel, are you still there? Yes, um, I didn't get um, the question, all of it, but I think I heard what type of transformation. Um, I, I, I focused on, on cultural transformation because what I noted is that our students were not performing um, very well in literacy and uh, knowing literacy impacts every other subject area. And uh, when I did some preliminary work, I discovered that uh, it was a cultural thing in terms of our teachers, in terms of what they knew, how they, you know, how they um, approached the whole, uh, the whole notion of literacy and so on. And so my attempt was to change the, 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 the mindset, change how they function. So I actually focused on cultural transformation. Kafi, I got the last part, but the internet was a little unstable the first, um, but they, 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 they the, uh, the title of the dissertation was a collaborative approach for improved literacy performance of students in a particular school. Um, we were told to focus on one school so that you could actually see the results. I actually employed uh, the qualitative as well as quantitative methodology and uh, statistically we saw significant improvement using the t-test in terms of the performance after having them do a test then the intervention and then um, that was followed by by, by another test which showed that significantly they improved because of the methodologies that were used, which incorporated shalom leadership, servant leadership, and all of those things. So, um, of course, as parents were, parents, education officers, we were all together in one room, some 40 of us, and persons were so happy to know that someone will take the time to go through the processes, um, you know, as it relates to literacy and impact their lives so that they could also make an impact in the lives of our children, basically. At least that's what I captured from what you said. Yes, that mm -hmm. was perfect. Thank you. Thank you very much. Um, and Dr. Marcel, um, your students are K through 12, right? Say that again, Dr. Jordan. Are your students K through 12? Yes, yes. They, okay, yes. okay. Um, I'll let you finish, Dr. Um, Paulette, because we do have some questions that are coming in the chat. Um, okay. So we finish with the presentation, and then we'll, so everybody who asked the question, just so you know, we'll let Dr. Paulette complete, and then we'll, I'll start bringing your questions in. All righty. Well, this is, this is my last slide, so it actually works out. Um, just to summarize, that the DTL is designed for a unique sect of world leaders, global leaders, who want to impact the kingdom of God through authentic transformation. So if you're in your setting and you're seeing opportunity for to, to research something and to also transform it, I mean, any, any a dissertation starts with a problem, identifying a problem, and then from there doing the research to establish the existence of that problem and then coming up with a, a solution based on that research. So if you're in your setting, uh, whatever problem that you are facing can become a dissertation research project. And then with the intention of not just documenting it, not just researching it, not just writing about it, but also creating that authentic change in the process. Um, Successful program completion includes research, and, and we have to emphasize that um, because it, you are going to uh, have a problem identified, you're going to have a purpose, you're going to have a reason that you're researching that problem, the reason why you've included it in your dissertation, but you've got to know how to research it. What have other studies, uh, conclusions been regarding that problem, what kind of literature is out there about that problem, uh, what are people doing in other places, what's worked, what wasn't, what hasn't worked, so that as you come up with that 
conclusion, um, it will be based on actual empirical research. And then application that, that culminates in a formal dissertation. Um, you won't be called doctor for nothing. You'll be called doctor because you've done the work and it culminates in that formal dissertation. On average, it can take three to four years to complete. There are some unique people who, who put their heads down and do nothing but the dissertation and they can complete it faster. Most of us have life going on outside of the dissertation and so we have to work it in and it may just take a little bit longer. It is academically rigorous. Um, you're going to be required, I heard Dr. Marcel say the number of pages required uh, per course there are going to be uh, demands on your time and your attention and your effort because it is academically rigorous. Uh, it, it demands that relentless commitment, time and resources. And, and if, you, if you don't make that commitment, you won't, will not complete the program. You have to make that commitment. A program completion results in a published dissertation that contains a roadmap for authentic transformation well beyond the classroom. So we're not talking about changing things for change sake. We're not talking about changing things for appearances. We're talking about changing things for the betterment and improvement of the kingdom of God and his children. And so um, the, the, the onus becomes, how can I incorporate real change, real transformation in this problem that I've identified in my environment in my setting and the DTL process uh, we will take you from idea to dissertation with complete assistance the entire way. Dr. Uh, Paulette okay. let me just underscore what you just said because if you're like me um, I might be scared away a little bit from hearing everybody <laughs> talk. <laughs> Um, and I just want to say, um, having been a DTL student, that from the beginning, at every step of my journey, there is support for me. Um, and so my role is all is admissions director, but I also do student support services. And so BGU um, faculty and staff, we 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 don't want excuses, but we do know that you are practitioners you do have a life. I have small children at home still. Um, and so this has taken me a longer time, but um, it is hard, but there's support along the way. And so mm -hmm. sometimes it's, it's your hard work and your vision that's carrying you through. And sometimes it's the prayer and the support of your professors and your PLC that are getting you through some of those tough spaces. So um, I, I wanna say it is student-centered. And so while you may feel a little, I was getting uptight already thinking about the dissertation projects while listening this morning, but um, it really is a student-centered uh, program um, that is based in prayer, um, but um, we wrap around the student to, to help you move through um, your program. So I, I wanted to say that and then bring in some questions. Dr. Paulette, we have, can you talk about the doctorate program for uh, teaching and academic versus the practitioner uh, uh, DTL? Can you talk a little bit about that? Okay. And I'm going to stop sharing so that I can see, because as long as I got these up here, I can't, I can't see you all. Alrighty. Well, now you I'll can stop sharing. Okay, there we go. Yeah. All right, now let me turn the video back on, because it always goes off when I start sharing. Okay. Um, the requirement to teach at the college level is. Um, it's 36 hours in a discipline. So if you at a master's level, 36 credit hours in a discipline, and you are qualified to teach at the college level. So the DTL will, as a doctor of leadership, of transformational leadership, as a doctor of, um, that gives you even more um, you're, you're at the higher level of, than the requirement. The requirement is 30 
six hours of master's level study in that discipline in order to teach at the college level. That's all that's required, not even a master's degree. Course is competitive and you're gonna be going against people who have master's degrees. So most of us who teach at the college level come in teaching with a master's degree. The doctorate will give you the authority to go higher. If you're at the undergraduate or community college level, you could stay at the 36 hours and teach forever. You go to the four-year university level, you, you're gonna almost the guaranteed you're gonna have to have the master's degree. If you wanna go beyond that, then you've gotta have a doctoral degree in order to teach in a master's level course or a doctoral level course then the dtl would would give you um that level of of uh, of qualification thank you um there's another question can you expand on the difference between uh entrepreneurial organization transformation and cultural transformation okay organizational and entrepreneurial and these um these options align with your interests on your dissertation project so for instance if you are in a large organization and you decide that you want to address a problem in that large organization most of us are you know large organizations are like our church denominations um, and you want to address a problem in that organization, then you would look at organizational entrepreneurial or if your dissertation interest has a business flavor. We have students who are interested specifically in, in uh, have a business uh, perspective with their dissertation, then they would select that organizational entrepreneurial. The cultural transformation is transformation in your own setting so that could be a small that could be a a personal transformation i've seen that done really really well where you tell the story of your own journey and how it has application to others who are going along that that same journey um the cultural could be the culture that you are in in your church the cultural you know uh environment in your uh local church it could be the cultural environment that the cultural suggest that it is in your environment so whatever that context is doesn't have to be an organization doesn't have to be a business doesn't have to be um a business related or organizational specific that cultural is in any other setting if that's where your problem emerges that's where you see your your potential to transform then that's where you would select the the cultural transformation and and we help you make that decision because you you kind of come to us with an idea of what you would like to study what you think would would be a dis, a good dissertation project and we help you to kind of say okay well that sounds more like cultural or that sounds more like city transformation if you're looking at your neighborhoods or your community or your local church um so it, it's a it's a it's broader at the cultural transformational level it's more specific at the organizational and entrepreneurial level if that answers the question thank you um, next question, do the city immersion experiences change based on the option of the DTL you choose? No, the city, the, the immersions are open to all BGU students. So the, the experience is the same for everybody who participates in that immersion, but you bring to the table what your individual perspective is. So you will be in, on an immersion with other majors. There'll be business majors in there, D-man majors in there. You, you, they, it's open to all BGU students. But what the DTL students bring to the immersion experience is their individual perspectives. Like if you are a city or business or cultural, you bring that in. And, 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 it, and the blend of the differences in the majors and their perspectives and DTL students and their options, the blend is, it makes it a really enriched learning experience. But it's, the, the immersion is the same for all BGU students, the immersion experience. You just bring your DTL perspective to it. 
Um, on that, um, there's a question, can you delineate between the PhD program and the DTL? Program. Okay, the biggest, the, the, and I was on the PhD um, program at the advisory that put it together. The biggest difference is the PhD is a 60 credit hour um, program. It is, um, it is aligned more uh, traditionally with the PhDs in higher education, um, uh, 60 hours versus 40 hours. Um, more research uh, focused uh, as a as a PhD would be. Um, the DTL is a practitioner's degree. Um, it is it is focused more on the fact that you are already doing uh, your leadership and your your profession. Um, the PhD is geared toward uh, more research. Uh, based not not that they don't want to transform because it is innovative it, it is a, a innovative uh, focused degree um, but the DTL is designed more for the practitioner um, the the person who is actually doing and and there is a research element but that's not the focus of the DTL if that if that answers the question but the biggest difference is you have a 60 uh, hour, 60 credit hour PhD, which is aligned with the requirements for a PhD, you know, at, uh, 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 in higher education. So it has certain specific requirements. It is research focused and it is, um, it is, um, it has an innovation versus transformation. Uh, perspective. Okay. Thank you. Um, a few more questions. I think um, that maybe I'll take an answer because we have a few moments left. Uh, the average age of the student and someone asked, is it possible to work full time and do the program? And I'm going to combine those and say, yes, it is possible. Mm -hmm. um, like I said, I worked full time before I even worked for BGU, running a nonprofit organization, and I have school age children. Um, and my husband works full time as well. So it is difficult, but it is designed for the practitioner, the person who is actively working in their field. So that's why it takes a little bit longer um, than just, you know, two years is real head on, but it does take a little longer because the pace is about one course, um, um, a quarter, and 12 credits is full time for BGU. So it is possible. You do have to block out some time. Um, and I'm a pretty methodical person. I'll be happy to share with you some of the little tricks I've learned um, along the way, but it is possible. We actually expect you to be working in your field when you um, do the DTL. So on that average age, this is these are people who are already exhibiting some leadership. So it doesn't mean that everybody is, uh, you cannot be young, but people are experienced. Uh, um, I will say that. So the, mm -hmm. the the average age maybe is I'm in my 40s and I started in my 40s um, for BGU. So it is people with experience and that does come with age uh, primarily. Mm -hmm. Um, mm -hmm. Please hear that you do not have to necessarily be in a ministry to do this program. Um, the DTL is a mix of business, uh, business programming, some biblical ministry programming, and of course, some research and some, some sociological kind of programming. Um, the other thing that I'll answer that's in here is next steps to enrolling. Um, so at our website, I will briefly maybe share my screen if it's up here. Nope. Um, at our website, www.bgu.edu, there is an apply now, and you would start your application process, and I would, uh, it comes to me, and I will start communicating with you about that. You will also meet with Dr. Jordan 
um, so that she can hear more about you, kind of an informal interview, um, see how the DTL actually specifically can serve your uh, ministry and work, and then help you kind of plan out how this program um, would, would look for you over, you know, you say, I want to do this in three years, I want to do this in four years. Um, and then the last thing is that we do rolling admissions, which means that every month we are uh, reviewing applications. Um, so we do a few every month. It's at the beginning of the month. Once you start inter uh, interacting with me over the application, I kind of start giving you dates and working out a schedule for you. We have classes every quarter, October, January, April, and July every year. And that's when you would start classes. Uh, classes are an 11 week course. Um, in that quarter, you go to class for about nine weeks and then you have the remaining weeks to finish up all of your work. Um, it is, uh, it's not self-paced like you just get on the computer whenever you want and do your work. It is actually set Zoom times, there are some deadlines that you have to meet, um, but it, it is a community of people moving through the class together. So even though it's online, it's not a self-paced, you know, whenever you want. Some things you can do whatever you want. You can do your discussions, you know, at 3 a.m. in the morning if you wanted to. Um, so what's most important in enrollment is that when you start your application, if you can get us an unofficial transcript as soon as possible, we do need official transcripts, but we can start validating any experience that you have with an unofficial transcript. And that'll kind of help us move you along to make sure that you have an accredited master's. If you're transferring any credits, um, we can start looking at those things as well. So our next classes do start the first full week of October, which I think is October 5th. Um, we still do have time at this point to um, do any enrollment and get people situated if they wanted to start in October. And then the next time after that would be January. It's the first full week of January um, as well. So let me make sure um, it's eight o'clock now. I just wanna make sure, um, what is the GPA? I don't remember that off the top of my head, but Dr. Paulette, do you um, have anything to say about it's a, that? It's, GPA? yeah, it's a 3.0, 3.0 uh, minimum GPA. Thank you. Um, and there's a question, I don't know if you can see that, it's just above that one. Why is it that some colleges prefer to have someone with a PhD yes. than one with a doctoral doctorate degree? Is a PhD superior to a doctorate? And that's from Joe. What I would say to that is it's not superior. It is different. The PhD is based on research. So there are universities that are more research focused where they would want only PhDs on their staff. So, so it just depends on the focus of the university as to the preference. But any time that you have completed a doctor of degree, you're at the doctorate level. And there are universities that would say, hey, it doesn't matter to us. As long as you have an, a doctorate from an accredited university, you can teach here. So it just depends on the focus of the university. There are large research universities who will only employ PhDs. That's what they want because their focus is research. But the, the doctor of degrees, which are the applied degrees uh, available to the practitioners, are equivalent in that they are doctoral degrees. They're just not research focused, if that answers the question. And let me add one thing that um, Dr. Martina, our registrar, shared at the PhD open forum that the the, pra the practitioner degree is much more common in the United States than in other parts of the world. So if you are in an, uh, another part of the world, you may want to um, explore that um, to see what are the universities, again, like Dr. Paulette said, what are the universities mm -hmm. in your area 
requiring. Um, it is eight o'clock now. Um, Brother Paul, I see your question. And I'm gonna just say, I think you should talk more specifically to Dr. Paulette. Um, mm -hmm, I see his too. That question. And yeah, trying to decide which program to take. Yeah, I see it. And I wanna say thank you. A few people on here have been in our current students or our alum and are just saying, um, confirming from Brother Jackson says, I, I am here to listen as I am the DTL graduate from Tanzania, East Africa. I graduated in 2018. I'm glad to listen and I can confirm that the DTL truly transforms individuals and society. My dissertation is based on the theology of work. I see transformation among people and the way they view work now as a ministry, not just for pay. It has changed the way they see work and do work. It has changed Sunday Christians to become Christians 24 seven on, on Sunday and the rest of their week at their workplaces. This is a wonderful program. I encourage people to join. Uh, BGU is a word of mouth organization. Uh, we don't spend a whole bunch of money doing flashy stuff, um, but we really do um, put our money into the relationships of the people that are here. And so you can reach out to anyone. There is an alumni group with BGU as well that you can ask questions. Um, and as anything, feel free to send me an email um, and Dr. Paulette. Um, we are both on mm -hmm. WhatsApp as well. So if that's a better mm -hmm. way to communicate, um, we can do that. And both of our emails, I will put mine in the... Um, uh chat but we have the same format first name dot last name at bgu.edu and so you can reach either of us did i record i did record this meeting and it will be sent out um as soon as we get it edited and formatted so if you have any questions do not hesitate to connect to either one of us. Um, thank you very much for your time. And I say this morning because I'm on the Pacific coast and it is just about yeah. eight o'clock this morning for me. So mm -hmm. um, thank you all very, very much for coming. And if mm -hmm. you have a few moments, if you wanna hang around, Dr. Paulette, if you're willing to do that, I would say let's do that, but um, I am gonna stop the recording. If you did not, if you did not, uh, not hold,